Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. Kelly Ambert, Dividend Diplomats. Get hyped, everybody. Get excited. We are here to talk to you about an undervalued dividend growth stock to buy and maybe put on your radar. But before we do, smash that mother effing subscribe button. Give Bert the herd over there and Lanny a thumbs up. We're here to talk to you about another undervalued dividend stock. And this one's a throwback because Bert may have owned this stock for the better part of 10 years ago. But the question is, is does he own it now? No, I do not <laughs> own it now. I sold it, I sold it a long time ago. The company has, has had its ups and downs over the last decade. They were like so many other retail companies left for dead, but they were able to turn it around and the comp this company's stock price has shot up accordingly. They, the analysts love this company. Everybody talks about how great their turnaround is. But I couldn't have foreseen this coming at the time I sold it. So we'll see. Maybe it's time to add it back to my portfolio, Lanny. Who knows? Bert's so aggressive saying it was left for dead because they truly were. Again, this was a company slash dividend growth stock that was left in ashes after the financial crisis. This was in the retail industry, the retail sector, and the brick and mortar fear was so high. Companies like Radio Shack, Steinmark, other companies. City. Let's not yeah. Circuit City. The, you know, JC Pennies of the world. You know, the, the fear of retail, the brick and mortar was so high. And this company was definitely at the time a huge victim. And, and Bert had some, I think, what was it, grandfathered shares that you had? I can't account. remember. It was a long time ago when I sold them, but. Yeah, to your point, their online sales were nothing. They had no online presence. The experience was terrible. So why would you look into the future and think this company was going to be thriving in 2021 the way it was? But it took a few new CEOs, a few new turnarounds, some new strategies. You know, companies always come in, implement, here's my three-year turnaround plan. This is what we're going to do to fix it. Well, finally, one worked, one executed, and shareholders today are reaping the rewards from it. That they are. And as always, everybody, the way that we found this dividend stock, specifically Bert found it on his radar. And we've been tracking this company for years. And I'm sure Bert, deep down inside, has this little hidden tab in his spreadsheet of stocks he sold that continues to track just to see how they're doing. But we run them through the dividend diplomat stock screener. And Bert, let's hit the community with the three dividend stock metrics. PE ratio less than the S&P 500, payout ratio less than 60%, and a history of increasing dividends. So that's exactly what we're going to do today in our video. We're going to run this company through our dividend stock screener. They recently released earnings at the end of May, though, so we're going to talk a little bit about the earnings, show you why we're so pumped up about this company, share some recent dividend news, too, because they announced a banger of a dividend increase back at the end of February, and then we'll run them through the metrics. So what you gonna do, Bert, when the dividend diplomats run wild on you, brother? <laughs> I don't know, but we should probably tell the people who this company is that we've been hyping up. If a lot of you haven't guessed it already, that company is Best Buy, take our symbol BBY. Yeah, that's right. The Geek Squad the, 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 is what they're known for. You walk in, you see the people all dressed up. That's not what they're known for, but they are the electronics giant. The, they can help you build your entertainment system. They always have those old CDs, game systems, everything, the appliances, you name it. Didn't you put a big Geek Squad decal on your Tercel? <laughs> I did, yeah. And then people, I was hoping people would recognize me. Like, I really want that car, but that wasn't what happened. Man, that car, my first car, the Toyota Tercel, was a four-speed <laughs> manual car with no power steering. It was a beast. <laughs> We needed the Geek Squad to really soup that car up. So, Bert, how they the actually, heck? They actually wouldn't have had anything to do because they didn't. That car did not have. It had the crank up windows on the side. It had every manual thing you could think of. Wow. Well, Bert. I mean, okay. So, Best Buy ticker symbol B B Y. Not to get confused with Bed Bath and Beyond, which is B B B Y. So, B B Y Best Buy. Their stock price has surged over the last few years when I was looking at that stock price chart. For mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. No, it's incredible what their stock price has done. It felt like long ago the company was trading around $30 per share. And that's where that's where it's grown from. It has increased significantly. Let me pull this up here. Yeah. 
June 2016, it was $31 per share. And now it is trading at $111. So it has about nice. over 200% increase there in the stock price. So I'm closing it on 300% if the price continues. So with that, how does Best Buy fall in line with the dividend diplomat stock screen? All right. Well, let's talk through some of these metrics here, Lanny. You ready? I'm ready. Price 111.04. Ford EPS, based on the analyst, is $8.25 per share. PE ratio is 13.46, well below this broader stock market of 45 times X. Want to hit them with the payout ratio, Lanny? I'll hit them with the left. I hit them with the right. Yeah, so with the payout ratio, with the analyst expectations of $8.25, Best Buy currently pays out um, you know, obviously over four quarters and total annual dividend of $2.80. So if you do the math, you know, 280 divided by that 825, that payout ratio is even below that perfect payout ratio, which we always consider 40 to 62%. And actually they are below 40% for yeah, it's incredible. Plenty of room to continue growing that dividend going forward. Not at all concerned about the margin of safety, which is what we are looking for when we assess the payout ratio. Now let's look at their dividend history. And that's what's interesting here about Best Buy. They have absolutely crushed their recent dividend increases. Their five-year average dividend growth rate is in the double digits. It's 12%, which is phenomenal on its own. In February, they announced a 273 percent increase in their dividend huge absolutely huge massive i mean just massive and when you look at the history you know that dividend wasn't going to go anywhere and i never thought that best buy would be on the dividend growth track record i didn't either because when they were going through their trouble it hung around in 2012 2013 they stopped increasing that dividend to kind of re-strategize and get through it then they started pumping it up once again. Started in 2014 is when the dividend increase has started, and they've been doing it annually since then with some, sometimes it's five quarters, sometimes it's six quarters, but in total, what we're seeing is around seven years of consecutive increases in your dividend pay. That's impressive. At an average growth rate of double digits, nonetheless, we'll throw in the bonus metric on Best Buy. You know, right now their dividend yield um, which is dividend over share price is actually over two and a half percent right now with the 280 over the $111 per share. I mean, again, you're getting above average market yield with a growing dividend in the double digits. Again, that's not too bad, especially when you look at the why. I mean, mm -hmm. that's, again, like you were talking about, Bert, you know, they were crushing the comp sales, you know, quarter over quarter from 2021 to 20. 20, obviously the pandemic, but a lot of people were doing those DIY projects, Bert, and what kind of would Best Buy sell to people really working in, inside their homes? So we've covered this when we've talked about Lowe's and we talked about Home Depot, how people are improving a lot of those projects or doing those bathroom renovations, those kitchen renovations, but it also trickled over to their entertainment areas. I mean, there are a lot of people we know that decided to get the new TV, improve their entertainment setups, get those sound bars. You also had those people that worked from home that needed to improve their networks. They needed to work on the router. So Best Buy served another niche of people that needed to improve their home layouts and their home setouts. So it was fantastic. And that's why their sales continue to grow. And it makes sense that the company is able to increase that dividend 27% because they are one of those companies that would benefit from the changes in consumer trends that happened during the pandemic. Right. I mean, heck. Best Buy even earned $2.32 in the first quarter this year alone. So even if you analyze, annualize that out, that earnings is supposed to look better than what the <laughs> analysts are anticipating. I'm assuming they're anticipating a little slowdown to that earnings, everybody going back to the workplace with the stimulus money stopping from the federal government, mm -hmm. as well as the overall pandemic becoming in a much better picture. But to, to contrast that point, what's interesting in their earnings release was management still increased their forecasted sales growth. They increased the range of what they're expecting. So they're now expecting between, what was it, 3 to 5%, I believe, 3 to 6%, I apologize, increase in year-over-year -year sales. So that's a huge negative headwind potentially from money going into your travel budgets, into your entertainment budgets. But with all that in mind, Best Buy 
still mm-hmm. is increasing sales growth during the year. That's impressive to me. So guys, really quick summary here on this Best Buy stock that Burt pulled out of his back pocket. You know, again, they have a price to earnings ratio below the overall market, which is over forward earnings is 21 times earnings. They're only at 13 times payout ratio, alarmingly low at 34% in a good way. That means there's safety in the current dividend and definitely promising growth rate going forward. And that growth rates in the double digits plus an above average yield. Bert, give me something here. What are you thinking about right now with Best Buy? Well, I'm putting them back on my watch list here. I'm not running buying. There are a lot of other great undervalued stocks too, but they are moving up very high in my watch list. I mean, the metrics speak for themselves, don't they, Lanny? Am I going to have to say it? Don't call it a comeback. Yeah, well, we're not going there quite yet. I mean, there's still plenty of other companies, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on them because I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Definitely Blockbuster took a couple notes from Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, Best Buy did change its logo to move, to move the... The big yellow thing. It's a lot smaller now. So, uh, yeah. But I mean, hey, they might have to, they're going to have a lot of new uh, fixed assets there on their books. They replace those massive signs that are on top of their buildings. Hey, or it's a wash once they've gotten rid of a lot of their property. They might be able to sell them on eBay. Who knows? Recoup, recoup some of that money. Sell it on Amazon. They're one of their bigger competitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, we heard here. Bert is having them on their watch list. Yeah, I mean, I was. it, it seems pretty reasonable, but Lanny, what are you thinking? I mean, this is something that brought to your attention. Let me see, I just wanna kind of get your candid reaction here. What are your thoughts on Best Buy? Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. These numbers, they're great. I mean, I'm personally not gonna add them to my portfolio. I feel like I've got a couple individual stocks in the retail sector that I'm trying to manage right now. One being maybe the other ticker with the extra B. In you there. are more exposed in that sector than I am. I've kind of stayed away from retail. You know, my wife's account, we have quite a few retail companies. Um, one that is doing yeah exceptionally well with TJ Maxx, but there's a couple others that I won't name here on this channel that, you know, we're really, you know, you know, there's the gap. We've come back with the dividend, but, you know, Nordstrom, these are all small positions, you know, so, okay. hey, you don't have to buy them. You don't have to buy every stock, even if they're undervalued. That doesn't mean we have to run and buy them. But I, I, I just list 20 retail stocks that we currently are. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so I'll be watching. Lanny likes the metrics, but he's not going to be buying. He's going to be looking elsewhere to find different allocations of portfolio. Everyone, let us know what you are thinking about Best Buy. What are your thoughts on these metrics? Are you going to be running and adding them? Or are you going to be watching them like me? Or are you going to be running and putting the Geek Squad decal on your car? Good happen. We need to know this. And, you know, come to think about it, should we do an analysis on eBay for another video? Let us know about that. And give Bert a thumbs up here because you may have also owned, you know, Best Buy in the past. And we want to hear it and see it if you did. Yeah. And everyone, please, again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, We appreciate it. We're almost at 10,000, so you can almost see that wrestling video. It's coming. Thank you for your support over the last year. We're hit him with the Stone Cold Burt line right now. And that's the bottom line, because the dividend diplomat said so. That was Bert the Hurt, and this is Laney from the Dividend Diplomats. Over and out.